Hello, welcome once again, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be continuing about the power distribution, which is actually the fuse circuit, the fuse panel, usually located under the hood by the engine. Now, there's so many fuses, obviously, in the fuse panel. Where do you begin? That's the question. Now, but the answer is, it depends what you're looking for. If I have a parasitic drawer, let's say I come in the morning and the battery is low. Now, is it low because the battery is weak? Is it low because the alternator did not recharge it? Is it low because maybe somebody used the car and instead of um, a, a no crank, it was a crank and no start, meaning that the problem wasn't the battery, but the, ba the, the problem was maybe a fuel issue or a spark issue, and then they kept on starting and starting and starting turning the ignition switch and in in that role you weaken the battery so it's not the battery's fault so let's take all examples as you see over here we have the systems you see these dotted modules let's say or systems they are part of another system going to another page wherever you see a dotted one that means there are more pins in other diagrams as you see over here see this this means all of this all of these fuses are contained in this panel over here you're going to notice a few things also this dark line over here called t1 is the main feed of the current for b plus this is that thick wire that's why you see the, you see this thicker then the rest, this is the thick wire, the black wire coming from the battery, which feeds the current to the systems. So the positive of the battery has a thick black wire coming to feed the rest of the systems. While the other one, the negative, is another thick wire, as you see over here. There's another thick wire from the alternator going back to the battery over here. Also... A black wire now let's say in the morning I come and I find that the battery is 10 10 volts first thing obviously to try to do obviously is to boost it obviously when you're successful in that attempt and you go and you um, uh, recharge the system and your car works and everything now you have to worry about what caused it like we just specified Maybe we have a parasitic drawer. That means one of these modules, one of the computer modules, one of the systems is drawing current over time. We notice it because we come, we leave the car, we leave the car, we come home from work, we come back the next day in the morning to go to work, then we notice it. So we think it's maybe a parasitic drawer. We're drawing current over time from the battery, weakening the battery. Where's the place that you would go? I always go... The rule is usually to go to the negative of the battery and put a clamp meter. A clamp meter is the one that I always show you, and I'm going to illustrate this on the car. So you're going to see everything on the car, but I'm preparing you so you understand what's going on before I even do it. So this is obviously the clamp meter that I've been using in every single video. So obviously you can see over here 40 amps over here. 40 amps, 200 amps, but this is DC. This is AC. This is good because I don't have to break the circuit. The natural rule is you take the clamp meter and you put it in series. You break this connection of the black one. When you do that, that's my opinion, you are resetting the modules, the computer modules. So if you had a fault before, you're awakening the modules. That's why I don't like that technique of breaking this wire. And putting a clamp meter or a meter actually a regular meter in series i like to use a clamp meter to put around the wire as you'll see when i demonstrate it on the vehicle okay so where would i go to do that my choice is always not not necessarily the negative my choice to clamp with this is this one this thick wire why because the current has to flow if there's a system that's on. Let's say there's a module that's on. Let's say 
this VSA modulator control unit is on and it's draining the battery overnight. It will be, I will be able to pick it up through this wire because the current has to flow through here. Now, whether you, th you hold of conventional current or uh, ele uh, electron current, the battery either flows from here or it comes back to the battery from the negative. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't make a difference in the direction of it. But I like to go over here because as you can see, look, it's feeding all, and I zoom out, this wire is feeding all the current that it needs to all these accessories. Plus, one more thing, you see this thick wire over here, another thick wire that I drew, plus the starter, to get the starter, the starter uh, cranking also. So therefore, you talk about maybe 400 amps close to it on a normal warm day. Where do we start? Now, usually the in the olden days, you used to take out the fuses. Can't do that anymore. That's why I don't like to take out fuses because you're resetting the modules because you're taking out 12 volts and you put it back 12 volts by putting back the fuse. By breaking this, you're doing the same thing. I don't like that technique as I just specified why. Therefore, I'm gonna put this clamp meter that I showed you around here. This will go around here, as I will demonstrate, like I said, hands-on on the videos. Now, what's the main one over here? Where do I start? I believe I have a drain. Am I going to go to every single fuse in the system? Remember, there's other fuses also. This is only one page. There's other fuses also. So, before we go to that, let's understand a few things. How to understand the schematic before we actually attack it for troubleshooting. As you can see over here, we have these triangles. S, we have this triangle over here, R, and other triangles also. That means there's a continuation on another page. This is not the full fuse panel diagram. There's another page to it, as you'll see later. So, first of all, where's the main fuse? How do you identify the main fuse of the system? The main fuse is always the one that has the most current. In this case, these we're talking about Asian cars. We're talking about uh, Hondas and Acuras. In this case, 125 amps. This will allow that much current to flow to all the systems. From that 125 amps, we go down... 10 amps is allowed to go here in this direction. The rest of that ampage will go to the other systems. Remember, there's another page here also, which I will show you. So from 125 amps, we're limited down here by this fuse, the 10 amps. And where does the 10 amps go to? To all these. All these. You see all these modules over here? From those 10 amps, we go to these different modules over here steering command or whatever that is power mirror power windows okay that's the main line now like i said i'm not going to take the f the fuse out and put a meter in series you're breaking the path that means you're resetting the module you'll not see it so once we get that battery fully charged by a booster we should have about 12.5 12.4 we go to the main fuse. We put it on, the meter on millivolts. Now, this one over here does not have that option of millivolts. It has volts. So, whatever you're going to read, whatever you're going to read will be in amps. See the A? See the DC? So, 0.15, we have to convert it to milliamps. We go three places to the right. So whatever this number is, if this is 0.15, three places to the right will be 150 milliamps. Okay? So why? Because we don't have that luxury of milliamps. Now, we need millivolts because we're going to measure a voltage. So now we're going to go and put it on volts. Okay? As you can see, it does give you the millivolts over here in this case, when you put it on this one. Why am I expressing millivolts? 
because we're going to go across each f the fuse, the main fuse, and we're going to measure in millivolts. If any one of this is drawing current overnight, we'll detect it by measuring the main fuse. Why? Because look where it's connected to. It's connected to this. And another page, as you'll see. So, one shot. This can tell me if I'm drawing current through any one of these systems. This fuse is not responsible for this side. It's responsible for this, like we said, and this. These come on their own. Because after all, 125 amps plus the starting current to the starter motor could be 200, 250, 300, whatever, depending on cylinders. You're talking about 400 uh, uh, amps easily, right? Then you have here 70 amps, 40. So these units over here, going to these modules, going to these modules also have current. So first I go over here to knock out these, putting on millivolts, as I showed you, and I'm going to go over here and measure then the highest one. I tend to go to modules, computer modules, headlamps, and things like that, as I will show you, like I said, a demonstration. But I have to go to here, to this one. Now, we said R over here. R goes over here. Now, where does R go to? Here's R. See this? From fuse 20, diagram R. This is R. This is where it's continued. So, as I said before, much more fuses. How are you going to attack it? I like to go to the main fuse that I just showed you, 125 amps. That's the main fuse. If any of these are drawing it, hopefully I'll be able to pick it up on that fuse. If I don't pick it up on that fuse, then I'll go to other fuses, high rating fuses. Now, Ohm's test. And like I said, everything will be demonstrated. Right now, I'm preparing you so that when we go to the vehicle, we understand what's going on. This is the only way to teach electronics like i said before mechanical is visual you can see bad rotors bad brakes you can see leaks you can see those things it's a visual you cannot see bad current low current you can do like i said you could do preventive maintenance for cooling systems for transmission you cannot do you cannot do uh, prevent the maintenance on sensors on computers what it is is what it is this is why you have to teach this in a different manner that is you have to understand how to go by the wiring diagrams now we go over here r is continued here was r remember r two fuse one right here remember this r fuse 20 this is this is the continuation when you see a triangle from fuse r Okay, there are many, much more pages also. There's another seven pages to this. That's how many fuses we are. Are we going to go every single fuse? No. We have to pick one that's in common to all of these. Now, like I said, we let's say we find a blown fuse. And how do we know a fuse is blown? On one side, it'll be 12 volts. On the other side, it'll be what? If you said 12 volts on the other side, you're wrong. No, that means it's not blown. 12 volts here and 0 volts here. What does that mean? That means maybe a module is shorted and I blew the fuse. We do Ohm's test. And I'll show you this. On the vehicle, again, hands on, you'll see it, exactly what I'm saying. Which way do we go and measure the ohms? Do we put the positive, this is the positive ohms over here, or put the positive over here? We put the positive over here after the fuse. Why? Because this is the one that's going to the load. The load might be the shorted one. Not here. This is a B plus line. You don't measure ohms on the power side. You measure ohms on the load side, the one that's not connected. Okay? Let's say we have a we think we have a problem with the stereo amplifier. We have a short. Which way do we go to measure voltage here and here 
How about ohms? Which way do you go to measure ohms? This is blown. How much will this be? 12 volts here, 0 volts here. On which side do you go to measure ohms? The one that's a 0 right here, from here. Let's say we believe we have a short over here, power seat control unit. Where do we go to measure ohms? We said after the fuse. Which is after the fuse? This side or this side? This side. This is going to the load, as you can see. We measure from here positive here and the other one to ground why why do we put the other one to ground because eventually all these units go back to ground to the battery that's the return line it's not drawn over here you don't see a ground to each one but they have to go back to the battery so the positive over here and you'll see it done the positive here and the negative will be to ground or the battery or any any chassis ground if you measure zero ohms, you don't put back another fuse. If you see higher resistance, you put back a new fuse. Now, this is the technique that I used. And it's been a successful technique. You'll see everything visual, you'll understand it much better. But like I said, the only way to teach the electronics is to understand wiring diagrams. If you do not understand wiring diagrams, you will not understand my technique. So please go to the videos that I showed about hands-on about my channel, Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto, which is monetized. Thank you for that. Um, and you'll see the cables of the battery. This is so important, and I always stress this in every video. If you have corrosion here, if you have corrosion here, guess what? That's resistance. That's a voltage drop loss that you don't want. Like If you see the video, I take out these terminals. I measure not I measure the resistance of the terminal to the post. You can measure resistance. If you measure resistance, you have corrosion. Many mechanics will go and take a visual because they're old school and they're used to hearing things and, and visualizing things. You do not do that in electronics. You measure things and the way you measure is resistance. You see in that video that I did. I measured the resistance of the uh, the uh, the clamp going to the post and to the wire terminal, the metal of it. It's a conductor. If I measure zero ohms, that's good. There's no corrosion, no rust on it. You're good to go. It's been working for me for years. A very important point, now it's winter time, increase the cold cranking amps of your batteries if you have to change it. If you have 600 amps, go to 800 amps. A lot of the vehicles that have problems where you have a bracket on them, then you, then you could do yourself a favor, you go online and you get an adjustable bracket that you can adjust it for the width or the height of your new battery. As long as it doesn't touch the, 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 the hood, that's negative ground. So you could do that or you could put a strap around it. Look online and you'll see. But remember, now is winter and a lot of people are having problems with the batteries. They realize it now. But... Like I said, once you change that battery, crank up the, the, the crank it, cold cranking amps to 850, 870, whatever it is, and you'll see a difference. You'll, you'll be able to crank after four or five days, no problem, no problem. Please go to my videos to see the resistance checks, to see, to see how to measure a relay in circuit. Thanks for watching.